<laughs> no, I, I think you got it. It's not that hard. All right. All right. You ready? Yeah. All right. So here we go. We're gonna go. Re- we're gonna go live. Welcome to Woodshop 101, where everything is made up and the points don't matter. Now meet the yin and yang of woodworking and the lady that keeps them in line, Jeremy, Drew, and Sam. Welcome to Woodshop 101, episode 57. I am Steve Carmichael, guest hosting on the Woodshop 101 podcast, and I'm here with Drew Crawford. Oh, wait. (laughs) Yeah, that works. (laughs) A Drew Crawford and Jeremy Short. <laughs> What's up, guys? What's going on? <laughs> a lot, man. Are we going to keep that? I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're keeping that. <laughs> Less editing. Yeah. I mean, I do, assigned, I do edit, but I don't like to edit, so... I've reassigned you guys your last names, so... <laughs> All right. That works. That works. My wife's going to be so confused. So, <laughs> does she listen to the podcast? Uh, only when I do. <laughs> oh yeah, so I listen to mine in the truck. So she, I don't, I don't think she listens to it. I don't know. I should really find that out. I think my parents do. Ever since I told them about it, but that's it. I don't know if my mom does because she doesn't really call me. She calls my wife to talk. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, like tonight she nice calls. Nice to see you too, mom. I was like, oh, I was like, oh, hi, mom. I'm glad I'm, I'm I'm doing good too. She's like, oh, well, I I was calling Kendra. As I, it clearly thinks. <laughs> so, do they watch your videos? I I don't know. No idea. Mm. I don't even know if my mom knows what YouTube is. Ah, uh, my mom has seen a few. Uh, my wife doesn't watch. She's just not interested. <laughs> my kids love to watch though. So, well, that's good. Do your yeah. kids have a favorite? Uh, YouTuber. Uh, let's see. My daughter likes watching uh, April Wilkerson and uh, Size Corner, and uh, I think we talked last week about the project I did where I put pictures of the uh, lady woodworkers on YouTube mm-hmm. on my wife's um, on my daughter's uh, picture frame I made for her to kind of encourage her to go seek those out. So. Uh, but yeah, uh, and Steve Ramsey, we watch his videos together. She likes that. So. Uh. Right. Does Does your son have a? Did you, Did you say your son had? Oh. Uh, no, my two boys. They're older. They're into marching band and stuff. But the funny thing is, they're. Um, friends in the marching band with them they watch my videos <laughs> so, <laughs> so i kind of get the feeling it's a little embarrassing for my sons uh since they're kid, since they're friends watch my videos you know i don't know i think i think they kind of think it's kind of cool but <laughs> like at least i'd bad. like to think that so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what we do as parents. We embarrass our kids. Yeah, that's so, right. I mean, it, it's it's just a habit. So yeah, they watch them occasionally. Yeah, depends on what it what it is. I guess depends on the, the project. All right. Well, Steve, what we wanna, don't talk about? Yeah, you want to get into the topic? I I, I know you kind of suggested uh, a, a topic, so you, it must have been burning hole in 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 your heart just to express like what, what you want to like get off your chest here. Yeah. yeah well, uh, I know we all have these tools that we, uh, bought and before we bought them, we thought I, ah, I just have to have that tool and it's going to make things so much easier. But then after you bought it, you never used it or you used it once and haven't used it yet. And it just collects dust. So, uh, so yeah, the, the topic is tools that never saw the light of day. Uh, so have you guys? Uh, let's see. Let's start with you, Jeremy. Have you ever bought a tool 
that you thought would be great and you just never used it? Well, I'm surprised by this answer too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of surprised by this answer because I really started thinking about it. And, I, and yeah, there's tons of things I've bought that I've never really used. Um, but I, I looked at like what monetary value, like what was the biggest impact in my shop that I thought. Um, and it's the Festool Domino. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> wow. Um, I mean, it's it's an awesome tool, and I think I've used it like three times. I've used it on three different projects. Um, but it it's it it is a complicated tool to use. Like you see people using it, like oh man, that thing's quick. It's it, it but it's so complicated, and it's for the pure fact that Festool's done everything in metric. Um, and there's a, a company called Seneca Woodworks that um or Seneca Woodworking, I think. They they make imperial versions of the of the the scales and the and the gauges that you can replace on it. But, I mean you're talking about now you gotta spend another like seventy five dollars on a tool that's already six hundred or eight hundred bucks. Um so I've used it three times. It's awesome. I'm glad I have it. But doesn't get used very much um and and i think that's why because it's it's pretty complicated to use and the three times that i've used it i haven't changed the settings at all and <laughs> i mean no, Less so, setup. So, so no let me change i've changed the settings but what i'm saying is so like i've done two set to two of the projects were panels um i, I made pizza pills and i i set it up once for the pizza pill and didn't change the settings. And after I got it assembled, the panels were still misaligned. Like one, one panel, the entire length of the panel was now raised up like a, a 32nd of an inch or, or a 16th of an inch. Um, and so that it, to me, the repeatability is just, it, it's not there. And the fact is like, if you really like hold on to it and, and all the little adjustment handles on there, they don't ever really get tight. Like I can just keep pushing them and I feel resistance, but I can just keep pushing it. So it doesn't ever feel like it truly locks in to the position it's, it, it's in. Like I, th I would really prefer it to have like some indent and stops. Um, so you really like, no, okay. It's in, it's, it, it's locked down or it's in, you know, whatever depth you want it. Um, I think the, just because that it's not hasn't been as easy to set up, um, and I haven't had the best results with it, it's kind of been why I haven't really used it, um, and I, and and it, it's disappointing. I mean, for a tool that's eight hundred bucks, and you see a lot of uh, bigger name <clears throat> woodworkers use them all the time, it has. So now just, you're 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 gonna go back to the biscuit joiner, aren't you? Uh, no, I never had a biscuit joiner. I have a pretty slick uh, dowling setup, um, but then again, the I've used that. In fact, I've only used it on one project. I use it on the table. Um, I take it back. Use it on two. I use it on that sofa table. But drilling f three or four different dowel locations on one side of the apron and and i mean it just, that just takes way too much time i'd rather cut like a traditional mortise and tenon um or get rid of the festival and go with like a hollow chisel mortiser so i haven't really decided if i'm gonna get rid of that festival yet or not um we're, I, I think i'm gonna give it one more shot one more project and then we'll determine but so far it's not for me <laughs> it, it, it's uh, kind of a wasted, uh, expensive, expensive waste of money. You know you're going to get lots of emails <laughs> and offers for that thing, don't you? Probably, but <laughs> you after, don't want it? after making this public, <laughs> you know what? I probably will. Um, but they, it's got to be a pretty high offer. I mean, this thing's still in mint condition. I'm not just going to let it go because I, I bought it. Um, with all the ex like the the accessory kit that comes with it, that's like another hundred and fifty bucks. Um, so they got to offer me a good 
750 bucks in order to get it. I mean, I think I paid dang near a thousand for the setup. So, oh, you know what? They got to offer me more than that because I have, I bought the entire sustainer. I just remember I bought the entire sustainer full of, um, that came with all the extra bits and full of dominoes. That's, that was another $385. So you just had all kinds of aspirations for this yeah, tool, Steve. Yeah. yeah, I think we I had I, high I, hopes. I almost have. I think I almost have fifteen hundred dollars socked into it. So, <laughs> wow. ho- hopefully, hopefully, you know what? I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna have hopes that on the next project it's gonna work out, and I'm gonna really enjoy the tool. Until then, <laughs> it's just gonna keep sitting. <laughs> so, all right, Drew, what about you? Uh, well, it's funny that you mentioned what you would go back to <laughs> if you got rid of the domino because mine is the hollow chisel mortar, sir. <laughs> I, I, sense a tr- I sense a trade coming on here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know that I spent way less on my hollow chisel mortar sir, than he did on his domino, so I, mean, I, don't, I, mean, I don't sense an even trade coming. <laughs> I mean, I don't think... I would use the hollow chills and mortar sword anymore, but I think the repeatability is probably better than, or at least I would think is better than what I, I'm getting with the festival. <laughs> probably, probably. Um, but yeah, my, my hollow chills and mortar sword is just sitting in the floor of the shop right now next to the radial arm saw and drill press and belt sander. Cause right now I don't have a cabinet in that spot. And that's where I plan on putting it, but right now it's just kind of neatly aligned with all the other tools that don't get used a whole heck of a lot yet there. So um, it, it's it's got rust on the table. <laughs> I accidentally spilled a drink on it one time, and I, I still haven't turned it on since then, so I don't even know if it still works. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I think once I have the, the cabinet made to where it's, I guess more user friendly to get out and and uh, actually utilize, uh, then I'll probably use it more. And I did use it quite a bit when I first got it, <clears throat> uh, but then pocket screwing was so much more fast <laughs> and convenient that I kind of left the chisel mortise or kind of set around. So much more fast. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It makes sense. That's, that's redneck for quicker. <laughs> yeah. So much quicker. Got so it. much more fast. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay. When are you building this cabinet? Because, I, I, you know what? Is this the same cabinet, like the radial arm saw, and like it's going to be like a kind of a miter saw station? Is that the same yep. cabinet you're talking about that I think you talked about last year? Yep. Okay. Hey, I never said I was going to have it done by a certain day. <laughs> I'm just curious when you were going to do it. I mean, I didn't say you were going to have it done. I was just curious. Well, here's my deal is that it's going to be a cabinet different than what I've made just because it's going to be out in the middle of the shop. So I've, I'm I'm going to have to mount it to the foundation. See, okay, so get some Tapcon it's, screws. It's and different. <laughs> screw it straight down to the foundation. Screw that. I'm going to get one of the, the, the 22 shell nail driver. You're going to go buy <laughs> one, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would too. And in fact, I've been trying to figure out how to just buy one, just because that thing is awesome. <laughs> That's so much more fast. I uh, see. Yeah, so much quicker. <laughs> so much more quicker. All right, Steve. That's, what? That's more better. What do you have? What? What? Uh, what or, or should I say, what tools do you have? Well, the tools I have that I never use, they've been sitting in the same spot for like four years, I think, or more. It's got a lot <laughs> that would of be dust. The, yeah, I've got two of them. The belt sander, the handheld belt sander, and a handheld electric hand plane. I mean, uh, those two, they're just so aggressive for the small projects that I do that I just haven't had a need to use them. The only time I used the electric can plane was to plane down like the top of a door. So it would, <laughs> wouldn't rub the say. door frame. I used that once for that and that's it. And I, I can't even remember the last time I used the belt sander. Now that I have that 
rigid, um, you know, oscillating sander. Mm -hmm. That can do just about everything I need to sand. Um, so as far as holding, you know, using the belt sander, I guess if I did a cutting board, I might use the belt sander for that. Um, but I've never done a cutting board, so. <laughs> uh, I guess it depends on the project, but those two tools, you know, they just sit there unused. Drew's never turned a pin. You've never made a cutting board. Oh, here's a trend. Uh oh. I think you should make a cutting <laughs> board, Steve. I <laughs> knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got to be an ingrained 3D one, too. No, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> because, no, right. I, no. That's because that wouldn't be your style. Your your style's got to be funky and, and quirky, so I you, you need to put your own spin, make a, a a cool shape cutting board or something. All right. Oh, it's I'll it's gonna be like a, a kiss cutting board. There you go, the kiss logo <laughs> cutting board. That'd be yeah. awesome. Van Halen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or Rolling right. Stone tone. <laughs> yeah, I accept your challenge. So I have to do a cutting board soon. So now, do, do you have? Yeah, I can a, use my belt sander. Yeah, you could. Do you have a yeah. Do you have a planer? I do. I have one of the Dewalts. The, the I'm, Dewalt. I mean, I would hate to steal the thunder from your belt sander, but it's easier to feed the plan the the cutting board through the planer. So yeah, as long as it's not an end grain. Cutting for, board, right? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, I mean, good lord, I learned that the hard way there, once. There's yeah. still people that do it successfully, but <laughs> boom, <laughs> I, I, I hear quite uh, some bad news about it, so I don't do it. Yeah, I think somebody tried that just to, I guess, to try to dispel the myth. Was it Matt Cremona? Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I, th I think he might have tried sending an ingrain cutting board through the planer to see if he could do it. Uh, I might not have that right, but I, I, I mean, when I when I did it, it it did okay in the middle, but once it got to the edge, oh gosh, it just tore it out so bad. Yeah, yeah, not a good idea. Yeah, but I mean, then again, so you could use the belt sander. It, you could use the electric hand plane. I mean, you, you know what? You could dust those tools off. Or I Ooh. could just walk down to my neighbor's house to his dream shop and use his giant uh, drum sander. Drum sander. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's exactly what I did. I drove across town to a buddy's shop and used his drum sander. So. Well, here's here's my two cents. If you're gonna make a, a, a little quirky cutout kind of cutting board, you need to get out that uh, that really fancy jigsaw of yours. Oh yeah, yeah. That, you know, yeah. Jeremy, Jeremy yeah, needs on, to use that too. I'm waiting on Jeremy to come over and test that out for me. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> not, not it works. <laughs> What's going to be funny is if it works for me, I immediately hand it to you and it shocks you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, work. It works just fine. Here, try it. Yeah. In case anybody's listening and didn't hear uh, the backstory on that, I've got this old metal craftsman jigsaw that my dad taught me to use when I was young. And over time, the cord frayed. So the last time I remember plugging it in, it shocked me. <laughs> <laughs> In I'm my family, in, in my family, that would be known as the frog lure jigsaw. Ah, <laughs> my dad gave me a frog lure a long time ago, and it, he gave it to me because he never caught anything with it. <laughs> I was like, "Well, thanks, Dad." <laughs> so, <laughs> anytime that my parents, especially my dad, gives me something and it breaks shortly thereafter, I I call it the frog lure or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, it, I'm probably not gonna. I'm I'm not gonna try that out for you. I've been shocked way too many times. I've, I'm just not gonna risk it. <laughs> in fact, I've been hit by 240. Um, I was in Liberia working with the Coast Guard, and I was gonna be over there for a couple months. I took my Xbox, and they have standard North American outlets. 
I was like, oh, sweet. It's 110. I don't even have to worry about my power converter. Luckily, I didn't have the Xbox plugged in. I just had the just like the little converter box on the on the power supply. My buddy's standing behind me, and I just jam it straight into that plug. And if that my hand didn't just wrap around that, I couldn't. Uh, and I'm just sitting here just getting shocked, and my buddy's behind me laughing. I finally <laughs> pop a fuse, and I'm able to, like, get my hand out. And I'm, like, grabbing my elbow, like, laying on the bed because, like, all the electricity just built up in my elbow. And I'm laughing so hard, but it hurts so bad. My buddy's just <laughs> rolling on the ground. I was like, well let's let's not try that one ever again ever i don't care if the outlet does look the same (laughs) (laughs) and that was like day one of three months so it was a long three months (laughs) long three months just don't ever do that again yeah no (laughs) so all right well uh I think, Steve, this was a, a really good uh, topic. I, <laughs> I actually uh, never thought about spreading that around that I had bought a nice big tool, but Jeremy kind of outdid me, so I think I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm officially yeah, opening the auction, auctioning bid when you hear this. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah Jeremy's going to bring all kinds of shame. I think once a year, our woodworking club here, we have this topic for a Saturday class. So, and what usually happens, you know, when you get 20 people who bring in a tool they rarely use, there's lots of trading going on. So, <laughs> yeah. It's like you don't want that anymore? Guess I'm driving to Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, on down. And actually, we're going through a gas shortage right now. So, you know. It's hard to find gas around here at the gas station. I I saw that there was a trending uh, picture, I think, that was in Atlanta, and it said, like, gas for $9.99. Yeah, yeah. uh, The station that put that up said, oh, it was a signal that we were out of gas if they put $9.99 up there. And apparently they're the only ones that know about that. (laughs) (laughs) So everybody else was complaining that they were trying to price gouge people. But there was plenty of diesel though, because it was like uh, two thirty nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was only I don't know two or three days. You would see gas stations with that had plastic bags over all the pumps. Um, so it's hard to find gas for a couple of days, but now it's getting better. So. Grief. Yeah. End of the world's coming. <laughs> yeah, it makes you realize you know when something goes wrong. Things Atlanta is usually where it quickly. starts. In the south. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, if you have a topic suggestion that you want to offer up for the show, uh, be sure and drop us a line. We have plenty of contact information that you can use to reach us. Um, if you have the topic suggestion you want to offer for the show, it is through email at woodshop101podcast at gmail.com. Or you can call us on our voicemail line to ask us a question, which we will more than likely try and base the uh, show around uh, as well. But that is an area code of 409-234-3959. And uh, even if you just want to give us some feedback, just some, you know, that a boy kind of stuff. (laughs) Thanks for having Steve on and uh, please get somebody else because we don't like listening to just you and Jeremy kind of thing. (laughs) So... Um, we each have our own contact information through our websites as well, and we also try and feature those questions through the podcast too. But you can go to the CarmichaelWorkshop.com for Steve Carmichael, or RHWoodshop.com for uh, Rockin' H Woodshop, that's me, and Jeremy has uh, CountrysideWorkshop.com. Uh, just go to the contact section, fill out the information there, and we will be happy to um, answer emails back to you. I'm usually very quick about it. Jeremy, on the other hand, is kind of like his dining room table, and he'll admit to it. I'm, I'm quick on my emails, unless I think <laughs> they should come to the show. <laughs> you said that you're not. <laughs> I'm getting I've heard better. you say that before. I'm getting better. He does have a planner now, folks, so that does help him. It, it does. I have scheduled email time. <laughs> so. and and steve i would assume is pretty quick on the draw too yeah yeah all right do uh you, well do you want to 
You think we should announce who the next guest host is going to be? Well, if you'd let me finish, I was going to say that this is Steve's last show with us. He's, he's done four shows with us, and we are trying to... Actually, we have lined up a new guest host for the next... Uh, what did he agree to? Did he agree to two shows or four? Nope. Ty, make, make him do four. He, he, he is. He's going to do the entire month. He's going to do October. four. All right. And that will be uh, Todd Klippinger. Uh, he actually dropped us a line a few shows ago, and uh, we just had to had to invite him on. So he will be with us for the next four shows after you listen to this one. So I'm kind of excited to, to have Todd on. I haven't really got to talk to him yet. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he seems like he's just, just going to be another one of them. Them dudes, it's funny. So, <laughs> well, good. Uh, your your All right. bedtime alarm's going off. It is. That's actually that's my time to get out in the shop. So I might need to pour one more across before I go to bed. <clears throat> but guys, uh, we want to thank you very much for listening. Uh, we appreciate having Steve on the past four weeks. Uh, so Steve, thank you very much for coming on, and uh, we hope to have you on in the future. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's been a blast. Yes. Looking forward to listening to Todd with you guys. <laughs> next time, uh, we, next time we get word that Sam's gonna come on for a surprise show, we'll have to get you on at the same time. Okay, that'll be cool. I'd like that. All right, you hear that, Sam? Invitation is is open. All right. Well, from Jeremy, Steve, and myself, we want to wish you guys well. Please be safe in your shops, and we will talk to you guys next week. So one, two, three. Boom! Boom.